Welcome. This video is a second part in a series outlining how to manage retainers in FunctionPoint. The first video provided an overview of the management of a simple style retainer, where you are building a client a set amount each month, and the services provided each month are generally the same. The client is not going to be requesting different types of deliverables from you from time to time that would all be considered part of the retainer. A good example of that style of retainer would be an SEO retainer, or perhaps a social media marketing retainer. If that style of retainer is not applicable to you, I still recommend watching the first video, as there is a lot of valuable information. This video will outline the management of a more robust style of retainer, where we are billing a client a set amount each month, and there are standard services provided each month, but the client could also request additional deliverables from time to time that would all be considered part of the retainer. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the management of a retainer for an auto dealership, where we're billing them a set amount each month and there are standard services such as SEO, but they could also be requesting other deliverables from us, such as new brochures or entrance signs or a new website for the dealership, and all these deliverables would be considered part of the retainer. We're going to start by navigating to the details page of a project that I've created for this video. The reason that the project is required in this style of retainer is that each of the deliverables that the client will request of us will all become jobs and we need to group those jobs together and relate them under a project in order to organize them under a retainer. We're going to start by reviewing the financial structure. In this example, we have a 100-hour, $10,000 monthly retainer that has an annual budget of $120,000. The project budget should represent the total amount that you expect to bill in the year. If your retainers have a shorter contract, adjust the amount accordingly. If they have a longer contract or are month to month and could theoretically go on forever, you'll still want to limit the budget to one year. At the end of the year, we will close down this project retainer and open up a new one. Notice all the jobs under the project retainer. The first is our auto group monthly retainer job, and it is what we refer to as the billing job. And its estimated value must equal the amount that you're billing the client each month. Every other job here is what we refer to as a tracking job, and most of them represent individual deliverables. There's also a job here called Auto Group Monthly SEO Work. And this is the tracking job for all the SEO work that we will do for the entire length of the retainer. All of the SEO work that we do each month will be tracked against this job, and it will stay open for the entire year. Each of these other jobs are deliverables that have been requested of us from the client that are included in the retainer. If we want to know when they were opened and what their status is, we can look at the Jobs tab. This retainer was opened on the 1st of August, and we can see that the monthly retainer billing job and the SEO work tracking job were both opened on the same day. It looks as though the entrance signs job was requested of us on the 7th of August, and that job has been completed. The redesign of the dealership flyers was requested on the 18th of August, that job is still open. The new website for the dealership was requested on the 5th of September, and that job is still open as well. Every time a client requests a new deliverable that is part of this retainer, you will navigate to the Project Details page for the retainer and choose to Add an Estimate, where you will select the service structure and open up the job. It is important to note that no matter what service structure you select, the estimated value of the job that you create must be zero in both hours and dollars. If we look back at the Financials tab, we can see an example. The Auto Group Entrance Signs job has a simple tracking structure. We can see that there is some design work, copy, and production. But the estimated hours and dollars are zero. The reason is that this job is included in the 100 hours and $10,000 per month that is reflected in the monthly billing job, in this case called our Auto Group Monthly Retainer. Just to reiterate, the estimated hours and dollars of every job included in the retainer must be zero. If you would like to provide hourly budgets for each job that you open within the retainer, you would do so using schedules. If we look at the schedules tab, we can see that we have a schedule for the Auto Group dealership website. We can see that the website job is starting on the 8th of September, ending on the 20th of October, has 240 hours in the budget, has 89 actual hours against it so far, there's 151 hours left in the budget, and it's about 30% complete. 
This value is based on how many tasks in the schedule have been marked as completed. So again, if we're wanting to track the budgeted versus actual hours for each of the jobs included in the retainer, we do so by creating schedules for them. If we're wanting to see a detailed list of all the tasks in the schedule and how they're doing, we would of course select it to navigate to its details page. Next we're going to review the reporting on this retainer as a whole, but before we do I'd like to point out the invoices. This retainer was opened up on the 1st of August. It is now halfway through September. Since we are billing the client on the 1st of the month for the services provided within that month, we have two invoices, one for the 1st of August and one for the 1st of September. Looking at the Financials tab will allow us to see the performance of the retainer as a whole. Let's review the amounts that we see here. The estimated amount is the value that you bill the client each month. The actual amount is the total value of all billable work entered against every job included in the retainer. This value is going to grow to be substantially larger than the estimated amount. And therefore, using the filters for dates is going to be crucial in reporting on the performance of this retainer on a month-to-month -month basis. The difference between the estimated and actual amounts is reflected in the variance column. And the variance column will grow very large as well if you do not filter those dates. However, Assuming that you're always billing on the first of the month for the services provided within that month, the invoice column will always be accurate up to the date that you're at. And therefore, the plus minus column is very important, as it reflects the overall performance of the retainer in its entirety, as it compares the invoiced amount to, to the total value of work that you've done to date. Use this value to see the overall performance of the retainer in its entirety without having to limit any date information. If we'd like to see the performance of this retainer on a month-to-month -month basis, we do so by using the date filters. Let's take a look at the month of August. I'll do so by entering August 1st and August 31st and choose to filter by date. And we can see that in the month of August, our 100-hour, $10,000 monthly retainer, we put in 98.5 hours coming out to a billable value of $9,485. We were actually $515 under our monthly retainer. We invoiced for the full $10,000 and therefore were $515 in the black. We can also see which jobs we worked on each month. In the month of August, we put in 38 hours into the entrance science job, 50 hours into the redesign of the dealership flyer. We put 10 and a half hours into the SEO work. If we'd like to see how this retainer is performing in the month of September, we would do the same thing. I'll enter my start date as September 1st, the end date as today's date, and choose to filter by date. I can now see that our 100 hour, $10,000 monthly retainer for the month of September currently has 97 and 3 quarter hours against it. It's coming out to $9,687.50. We're currently under the, under the retainer value by $312.50. We've already invoiced on the first of the month for the services provided within this month. So we're currently up by $312.50. However, there's still another week to go in this month. And at this rate, it looks like we're gonna be going over our retainer amount for the month of September. Furthermore, we can see that almost all the time was spent working on the new dealership website. So just to recap, you'll start by creating a project for the retainer. You'll then create a billing job with an estimated amount that reflects the amount that you will bill the client each month. Multiply that value by 12 to the overall project budget. Every piece of work included in this retainer will then need to be opened as jobs within the retainer project with an estimated value of zero. Tracking the budgeted versus actual hours for all of these jobs included in the retainer is done by utilizing the schedules module. With regards to billing, you will bill the client on the first of the month for the services provided within that month and you will bill 100% of the estimated value of the billing job. If you have multiple retainers that you are billing on the first of each month, the best process for doing so is to do a job find for the category of retainer 
and then run a multi-job invoicing session. You will then be able to create invoices for 100% of the estimated value of all the retainer billing jobs with just a few clicks. For guidance on multi-job invoicing, please refer to the help site for valuable information and documentation on the subject. For an example of billing just this one retainer, I'm going to navigate to the details page of the billing job and simply choose to add invoice. The default value is 100% of the estimate. Therefore, clicking on create will generate an invoice of, in this case, $10,000. You will then be able to see that invoice reflected when you look at the retainer project details page and of course within the Retainer Projects Financials tab. That concludes this video and the two-part series on the management of retainers in FunctionPoint. Please continue checking out more of our videos, more helpful information on using FunctionPoint.